Hello everyone, my name is Corinda Pell from Corin Wax Photography. Today I'll be showing you how we'll transform this picture to this picture. If this is your first time on my channel, feel free to like, share and comment. Let's get into it. So the first thing I like to do when I import my picture into Camera Raw is to fix my white balance. The whole essence of white balance is to basically keep your whites white and to keep your blacks black. However, on this picture, I would like to go with the daylight balance scale, which is 5100. And I like to tint my pictures to 13, just for creative purposes. As for my exposure, I think I kind of like it. However, I would increase it slightly. I don't really like doing much in my contrast. As for my highlight, for sure I would like to take it down a bit because I usually bump up the whites. Open up my shadows a bit and then bring back some more highlights by bumping up the whites. And crush my blacks slightly. So for me with editing, I feel like keeping it as simple as possible. I don't like to uh, over tweak, you know, I mean, too much of everything is bad. So I try as much as possible to just um, add the stuff in little increments and making sure that it does not alter the original picture, unless if you want to do that for creative purposes. And then I reduce my vibrance. I like to reduce the color a bit. And now let's go to the curve layer. On my curve layer, I basically like to just do the, the popular S curve. To create in the S curve, I like to use the point in doing that not the parametric and the s curve basically like it sounds it just means creating an s with the straight line so that would be it for now for this raw image now let's get to manipulation so with my image opened in photoshop the first thing i would want to do with all my pictures is to duplicate the image so after duplicating the image, now we want to crop her out because we basically want just the head and the beads, right? So doing that, we select our quick selection tool. And um, if you go up here, you would see that the new Photoshop has select object. So you could click on it and it automatically tries to assume what you want to crop and it crops it out. However, you would have to refine the selection that Photoshop automatically did. So your selection doesn't really have to be so perfect because I know that we would still have to refine it afterwards. So after selection, you would go up and click on this bar. So the part you actually see in red that's the part you would be cropping out. So this is more like a guideline to what you're taking out and what you're keeping. And you can also change the color of that by just coming to color here, clicking it and choosing whatever color you want. But I just kind of like the red, it works for me. It doesn't really have any effect on the image. It basically just it helps gives you a guideline to what you're cropping so you see clearly what you're cropping and what you're not. I like to select the decontaminate colors. So with my refined edge brush, I like to select my decontaminate colors because that way it takes away the gray in this picture, but it would leave the shadows. Also, you can reduce the intensity 
of this uh, color decontamination. Um, sometimes it might be too much, some other times it works perfect. However, most of the times with all effects that I apply in Photoshop, I like to reduce the intensity. So basically the reduce just helps in continuing the general um, cropping, feathers it and all of that. However, for me, I like to keep it as low as possible. You can use the tools that you see here, like smoothing, feather, contrast, soft edge, to fine tune it manually. However, I will leave this one on one. So what we're gonna do now is basically to kind of work on this background because I like to maintain the shadows. I, I wouldn't want to just change the whole background i mean we get to change the color eventually however for this picture i would like to have some of the shadows and floors in the background so it just kind of keeps it as original as we could keep so with your brush tool and your opacity on 100 your flow on two and the hardness of the brush to the hardness of the brush rather to zero Press an Alt on Windows and Option in Mac. You could literally just sample a color and you paint it on a new layer that you've created. And when you sample a color, you just paint it. And what this is doing basically, it's blending the background. So I'm not really erasing, but what I'm doing here, if you look at the layer underneath here, I'm basically painting in the colors the exact color so that way it's kind of hiding the tape and the floors of the background however we're still maintaining the shadows now the next thing I would want to do is to crop the image and I usually crop it on five for four by five which fits perfectly on Instagram so so what we should do now is to change the color of the background. So you go down and pick your gradient and you select one of the basic gradient. So I'll select something around this color somewhat here and then the light to shade of the color, something similar except it should be lighter. Now the way it looks now, it just looks like, uh, of course, like the gradient which we just added. You see, we cannot really see shadows. Um, and that is why we left the background with some shadows because I know we're gonna change this, um, the layer blending mode for this gradient layer to bring out the shadows underneath. And how we do that is by changing our gradient layer, it's blending mode to fit whatever it is that we want. So the new Photoshop CC helps you see all the effect of the blending mode when you just hover around them. You know, by just hovering through, it just shows you the different effect. So going through, can you could already see what works for you or what doesn't all the way through. But in this case, I would go with the multiply but the multiply is a bit too intense, so I can always reduce the opacity a bit. I think somewhere here is good enough, 79. So I would like to blend the shadows here to here even further, so we take away this whole light. So I turned that off so we could see and work on the background separately. Turn it back on, this is what we have. I think this color is too intense. Let's just brighten it up a bit. Yep, some more here too. That should be good. This is me just checking to see the different effect it will give. However, I think I'll just keep it on 56 and then reduce my opacity. 